We're going to do inference about two means with dependent samples. I've already written the data on the whiteboard here. Um, so you're going to want to put these in your list. If you go um, stat enter, um, put x sub i in list 1, y sub i in list 2. Now since we're doing um, inference about two means with dependent samples, that's very important, dependent samples. That means this number is in relation to this number. And if you don't line them up properly in your list, you're not going to get accurate calculations. Um, I just took this out of a word problem um, in the textbook. Um, it's, I believe, two people, two people's reaction time to um, a light or something with a trigger. I don't know. Something to that effect. But these two numbers are related. Observation 1 for x sub i and observation 1 for y sub i are related. So when you go in your list, put them in an order, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, and make sure these are next to them. Seven pieces of data. So you'll put those in list 1, list 2, and then you'll scroll over to the top of list 3. And you'll highlight where it says L3. Not here. Go up. So where it says L3. And in the bottom of your screen down here, it'll say L3 colon. Now we're trying to find the mean, population mean sub D, which is defined by mean of X minus mean of Y. Population means. So we're going to do, got L3, cursor over that, brings up L3 colon on the bottom. You're going to do L1 minus L2. And a way to bring up L is to hit second 1 for L1 and second 2 for L2. So if you enter that in, when your cursor is on L3, if you'll hit enter after you get that in, List 3 will be populated. Now, List 3 is populated with a bunch of numbers I didn't memorize. I'm going to erase this, so hopefully you got it all down. We know that UD is defined by population mean sub X minus population mean sub Y. Now, you can get out of that screen and go to um, stat, and I don't want to tell you wrong here, stat, calc, so hit the stat button, and you're going to scroll right, to count and then yeah one variable stats hit enter very important this should if you had a clear screen from the beginning this should bring up a screen that just has one variable stats written on the top don't hit enter you type in L sub 3. We want statistics from the list L3. So put in L3, hit enter. That will give you some junk. 
We're going to use it. Um, what we need from that, those statistics, is the X bar. Well, let me rewrite that. It says X bar, but that's because it doesn't know what we're doing. If it knew what we were doing, it would say D bar. So D bar, which it says X bar on your screen, is negative one. Point six one four. So I don't want to write a long number. And then the standard deviation. It says s sub x. If it knew what we were doing, it would say s sub d, which is one point nine one five. All right. And we are going to use an alpha of 0 0.05. Now, we need to find our test statistic and our critical value. So let's do critical value first. To find critical value for an inference about two means of dependent samples, our equation is not on this page. T naught equals D bar over S sub D over square root of N. What was N? I don't know if you wrote it down. It was 7. So for, for paired data, we had actually 14 pieces of data, but they were paired. So N is going to be 7. Um, always use your pairs. So that is negative 1.614 over 1.915 over the square root of 7. If you're going to calculate that, you need parentheses there. Um, this is going to open a parenthesis. No, it's not there though. The syntax is important, as always. There's parentheses there. Um, to be safe, but I like when I'm doing a fraction. I like to put in these uh, before that division line. You don't have to in this instance. If that was an addition or subtraction on top in the numerator, then you would need those parentheses. Good habit to be in. Anyway, calculate that. Should come up with a... We're not doing critical value. We're doing test, statistic, T, which is negative 2.23. Poor space management there. Um, negative 2.23. Okay, that's what we got from there, which came from here. Got the equation. Moving on.
as we do. We need critical value. This is going to be the T tables. So you're going to go in the left column of your T tables, degrees of freedom is n minus 1, so degrees of freedom 6 across to left tail test. So just use your alpha 0 0.05 meets at negative 1.943. Negative one point nine four three. So now there's an equation, I mean there's a, a program in the calculator. If you go to t test and use go to t test and then there's data and stats highlight stats no nope, scratch that highlight data because you could do it from the list highlight data put in um, u sub d or it says u naught in the calculator make sure that's zero um, it may ask you for X bar, it may ask you for standard deviation of the sample. If it does, put those in. It may ask you for the 0.05. Um, but make sure that your list is L3. And then you calculate that, and it will also give you your P value. which is 0 0.0336. So now we can draw our curve. Artificial zero, left tail test. This line is our critical value, negative. 1.943 Our test statistic negative 2.23 falls to the left in the rejection region that is T naught equal negative 2.23 and this is 5% of the curve. So, our decision, rejection region, H naught, reject H naught, conclusion, there is sufficient evidence to support the alternate hypothesis. Support the claim. And this was the claim. So, there it is.